I begin in the name of the Almighty Allah, the beneficial and merciful. Praise be to the Almighty Allah who created the universe, the heavens and the earth below. Praise be to Allah who created all cre creatures, big and small, angels and human beings. Peace be upon peace and blessing be upon Allah the Almighty and to his very last Prophet Muhammad, to whom the Holy Quran was revealed. Peace and blessing be upon the Prophet's daughter, Lady Fatima Nora, the leader of all women, past, present, and future. Peace and blessing be upon all the true, false successors of the Holy Prophet, Imam Ali being the first one, and Imam Mehdi being the fourth one, who is still alive in the sight of the Almighty Allah. Mercy and blessing of Almighty be upon all of you. as alaykum. We, the Shias, the followers of the Arabic, must understand that under all circumstances, we hold the true fact that Imam Ali was the rightful son of Ibra, and Imam Ali will come soon to rule the world. Islam is the final religion of the Almighty Allah and the final victory will be of unite of all Muslims under the final leader of our many. The family of the Holy Prophets was purified by the Almighty Allah Himself. But the way the Prophet's daughter, Bifatma, was treated after the death is a shameful part of Islamic history. The culprits who mistreated the Prophet's daughter by stealing her right to inherit the garden of Adam gave the wrong message to Muslims around the world and the importance to follow and respect the Arabic. This is the beginning and harsh cruel treatment inflicted to the Arabic by a long chain of illegal, unworthy and self-appointed leaders who came after the death of the Holy Prophet. This ill-treatment of the Alibad eventually led to the great tragedy of Karbala, Kufa and Sham. After the death of the Holy Prophet, Mavia sided with the enemies of Imam Ali. He played an important part in grabbing leadership from Imam Ali. For this, he was rewarded by a second Khalifa with the governmentship of Syria. A, me a major mistake by the second Khalifa was to give back the power to Mavia, the son of the evil Abu Safyan, the arch enemy of Islam. During his time, during the time of the first three Khalifa, the evil doings against the pious Muslims were being ignored. The public funds of Muslims accumulated through taxes and so on were being not given back to the Muslims, but yet being spread amongst the evil people and their friends and their companions. This corruption situation became unbearable during the half of Ottoman, the Sir Khalifa. The angry Muslim public could not take this no longer, and the Sir Khalifa was murdered and taken away. After the murder of the third Prophet, the Muslims requested Imam Ali to take over as the leader, and so he did in the year of 35. He accepted the Khalifat on the condition that he is allowed to rule under the true Islamic law. Imam Ali set out immediately for a change, a return of the laws of Islam, the Islam that we know today to undo the wrongdoing of the previous 24 years of Islamic following that had taken place. He dismissed all the dishonest and corrupt governors and replaced them with honest and religious people. These people could not accept that they, the strength and powers and wealth had been taken away from them. And these people went ahead to support the disease later on to seek and get their own revenge. Mavia, the governor of Syria, was also dismissed for his corruption and un-Islamic doings. Mavia took refused to give up his position. This led to the Battle of Sifirin. When Mavia was about to lose the battle, he managed to trick and bribe with his evil tricks the majority 
Majid Imam al Ifrabi to insist upon referring to dispute this governmentship of, amongst a group of appointed people. Using the same method of bribery, Mahabir managed to get the decision to his favour. Therefore, Mahabir was allowed to continue to govern Syria. The people of Kufa betrayed Imam Ali when they needed their support. They became dishonest and corrupt. Again, these people well, became corrupt and dishonest when Imam Sayyid al Islam and his family and his companions also returned to the same land. Mahdiya and his father spread an evil propaganda against Imam al Islam and his family. They said this was newly converted, but these become people became ignorant towards Islam. And these people refused to follow Imam al Islam and started to accept Mahdiya as their true leader. They considered Mahdiya to be an outstanding companion of the Holy Prophet, honourable and a true pious Muslim. But this was not true. And he was just a hypocrite. The evil propaganda of Mahdiya and his agents in Syria with the other Islamic territories misled and poisoned the public's mind so much that Imam Sayyid al Islam asked Yazid's men in Karbala, Why are you here gathered? to kill the grandson of the Holy Prophet. And they replied by simply saying, it is due to the hatred of your father. Today is the second night of Muharram. Today, again, we have a special guest. A guest who, to whom we cannot see. To somebody that we cannot smell. But yet, if we knew that this person was going to be here, we should arrive early, we should prepare ourselves, we should be at least in Wuzu and at least wear clean clothes. Because today, the visitor and our chief guest, as I can say, is Bibi Fatima. And she is here to collect all the tears, she is here to see how we grieve, she is here to support us, she is here, and she will always attend every majlis for the Day of Judgment to ensure to see that the sacrifices of her children will live forever. On the second day of Muharram, Imam Saint Karaban reached the start side of Karbala. Thousands of Yazid's men were already there, ready to fight him. A small tribe of people living in Karbala gathered around the caravan. Imam Saint Islam inquired about the land in Karbala and then he brought the entire land. This is a very clear indication that the only land that we should be clearly looking to invest in is the land that we will be buried. We already start looking for bigger properties, flats in Dubai, but yet our true land should be the land that we should be buried in. We should also be concerned about the land where our children will be educated about the element. A place where we can gather and remember the element on a regular basis. Imam Sayyid Islam went to, to the tribe then and he spoke to them and he said, O oh, men of Karbala, we have not come here to fight. We do not have no weapons. We have come here peacefully. Yes, these soldiers will fight us and we will be killed. They will not bury our bodies and they will be left amongst the land for wild and animals. I request one favour from you, just one favour. And that favour was not to join them in this war, it was just to bury their bodies. Imam Hussain looked around and he turned to the women and he said, Hey ladies of Karbala, your men are cowards and they will fear the Yazid. They may not bury you. Our bodies. Oh ladies, while your men hide and go to the fields, please come out of your houses and bury our bodies. Somehow Imam Hussain knew that nor the men nor the women would carry out his request. Sadly, he turned to the children and he spoke to them very gently. Oh children, if your father or your mother 